Mesonychids resembled wolves, albeit superficially and probably walked on the flats of their feet. Most paleontologists now doubt that whales are descended from mesonychids, and instead suggest that they are either descended from, or share a common ancestor with, the anthracotheres, the semi-aquatic ancestors of hippos. These wolves on hooves were probably one of the more important predator groups in the late Paleocene and Eocene ecosystems of Eurasia. First classified in the clade Mesonychia, more recent studies have found Andrusarchus was closer to Entelodonts. It was the largest terrestrial mammalian carnivore known on the basis of the length of the skull and it had enormously powerful jaws. Since it was discovered along the shoreline, it has been theorized that this animal may have used its powerful jaws to eat turtles and mollusks. Elimerix had small tusks which it used to uproot plants, and spoon-shaped incisors ideal for pulling and cropping water plants. It probably had similar habits to the modern hippopotamus, to which it may have been related. The nature of the sediments in which anthracotheriids are fossilized implies they were amphibious, which supports the view, based on anatomical evidence, that they were ancestors of the hippopotamuses. Entelodon is an extinct genus of rather pig-like omnivorous mammal with bulky body. Its teeth were unable to slice meat. As every predatory mammal group ever known has independently evolved blades or notches on their teeth to slice meat, entelodonts are unlikely to have been predators. However, they were among the largest animals in their environments and could easily exploit any available food. Deodon is the largest known entelodon. It had a broad distribution across the United States, but its fossils are rare, which suggests they were neither social animals nor especially attracted to carrion. It lived in a floodplain environment with wet and dry seasons. It's differentiated from other entelodonts by a suite of unique dental characters and may indicate it could chase smaller prey. How dinoceratons are related to other mammals is in dispute. They are probably part of the hoofed mammal group. A recent phylogenetic study recovered dinocerata as closely related to Carodnia, showcasing them as part of the Uungulata assemblage. Gabiotherium lacked knob like horns, or even fang like tusks. Instead, it had enlarged cheekbones and an almost spherical snout. Uintotherium most unusual feature was the skull, which is both large and strongly built, but simultaneously flat and concave. This feature is rare and, apart from some brontotheres, not regularly characteristic of any other known mammal. Its cranial cavity was exceptionally small due to the walls of the cranium being exceedingly thick. Prototypotherium was slightly larger than a rabbit and would have been adept at digging and likely took over the burrows of other animals. It probably resembled a rodent, possessing slender limbs with clawed feet. Homalidotherium was probably partially bipedal, being able to pull down tree branches with its arms while rearing up on its hind legs. Due to the isolated nature of South America, many notungulates evolved along convergent lines into forms that resembled mammals on other continents. Unlike its relatives, Rhynchippus had no large tusks.
Toxodon would have had a very unusual gait, due to its peculiar proportions. It may have galloped to escape predators, but like a rhino, it probably relied more on its size as protection against predators. It was among the largest and last members of its order, and was probably the most common large hoofed South American mammal of its time. Trigodon bore a superficial resemblance to a rhinoceros, in that it had a horn on its forehead. Diodiaphorus closely resembled early horses, but unlike them, it lacked fused limb bones. Its skull was short and had a relatively large brain cavity. Judging from its low molars, it ate soft vegetation, such as leaves. Thotherium was the smallest representative of the order Lytoterna. Judging from its long legs, it was a fast runner. It had remarkably reduced toes, only one horse-like hoof remained. Theosodon was a terrestrial and cursorial animal that may have lived in both forests and more open environments. Due to its size and its long neck, it was likely a high browser, stripping leaves off of trees and shrubs high off the ground. Macrychenia as some kind of cross between a camel, a horse and an elephant. However, these animals were actually distant cousins to the parasodactyls. It is unclear why this animal became extinct. Some paleontologists have asserted that Macrychenia may have been hunted to extinction by early human hunters. Others suggest that the influx of large carnivores into the area led to its demise. Astrapotherium was probably at least partially aquatic, living in shallow water and feeding on marsh plants. The nostrils were placed high on the head, which might indicate the presence of a trunk, but could equally be due to other reasons, such as an inflatable nasal cavity. Pyrotherium was named like that because it is the first specimens that were excavated from an ancient volcanic ash deposit. Possible South American descendants of the Xenungulates, the complete study of the Tarsus of Pyrotherium fails to support this relationship. Phenacodus was cursorial and herbivorous, or possibly carnivorous. It is one of the earliest and most primitive of the ungulates, typifying the family Phenacodontidae and the order Parasodactyla. The middle toe was the largest, and the weight of the body was mainly supported on this like modern horses and rhinoceros. The Gravy's zebra lives in semi-arid grasslands where it feeds on grasses and legumes, it can survive up to five days without water. It differs from the other zebra species in that it does not live in harems and has few long-lasting social bonds. This zebra is considered to be endangered. Its population has declined from 15,000 to 3,000 since the 1970s. The family of all modern rhinoceros first appeared in the late Eocene in Eurasia. Many species have been referred to as but only three valid species are recognized. 